So when I say the word economics, what comes into your mind? Go ahead and think about it for a second. Go ahead and ponder that. Economics. Hmm. Well, what's coming to your mind? Maybe money. Maybe businesses. Maybe, you know, government economists and uh, people on TV in the fancy jackets. Um, hmm. Maybe stocks, you know, the little ticker running by at the bottom of the screen on your favorite news station. Yeah, maybe value, choices. Maybe economics is a little bit all of this. And, you know, maybe none of it so much. But let's go ahead and dive in. Let's try thinking like economists for a second. What's more valuable, water or diamonds? Now, I know what's probably popping into your head right now. Kevin, of course, diamonds are more valuable than water. I'd much rather have a big old bag of diamonds than I would a nice case of bottles of water. Well, this is one of the oldest questions in the, in the economic uh, thinking process in the economic literature, and it's gonna depend. It's gonna depend, right? It's gonna depend on the situation that you find yourself in. You know, here in Bowling Green, where I'm at, where I'm teaching from right now, water's plentiful. There's water everywhere. I can walk out, down the hall, go to the water fountain, fill up my bottle, got no problem. Got all the water I need. Even though it's essential to life, and it's very important in monetary terms, in money value, it's not that valuable. Now, diamonds, diamonds, on the other hand, a little harder to come by, right? A little harder to come by. I'd have to go up to a shop and haggle prices. And, oh, Lord, I've done that before. Uh, it's not fun, I tell you that. Not fun. But they're expensive, right? In monetary terms, in money terms, they're very valuable. But why is that? We have an abundance of water, right? We got water everywhere. Diamonds are very rare. And I think this drives at the key concept of economics, the critical concept in economics, the concept of scarcity. Scarcity. All I mean when I say scarcity is society's situation in which there's limited resources. There's only so many hours in a day. There's only, only so many diamonds in the ground. And yeah, we can make more if we want to, but... Eh, it's not quite the same, right? Maybe there's some uh, ethereal or romanticized quality to a diamond dug out of the ground. Who knows? Who knows? But resources are limited. That's what we're driving at. The amount of time and effort that I can put into my work day is limited. And therefore, the amount of wage and the amount of money that I can earn is limited. The amount of stuff I can buy with that money is limited. So I'm going to have to make choices. I may want everything. I may have unlimited wants, right? I want fancy cars. I want a nice house. I want a big old bank account with all the money I can dream of in it. That's just not the case, right? I'm not so fortunate as to live in a world with unlimited resources. The world I'm in has limited resources, but very much unlimited wants, right? Very much unlimited wants. Scarcity is this problem. A problem where a world has limited resources and unlimited desires, unlimited wants. So what is economics? What is this word that you hear on the news? Well, economics is the study of how people deal with this problem of scarcity by making choices. By making choices. All throughout this class, we're going to talk about maximizing how good we can feel. How can we make ourselves as well off as possible with these limited resources that we have? That's what economics is all about. You know, and we make these decisions, we make these choices on every level. You know, does the government uh, send an extra little bit of money our way because there's a big economic downturn? I think in uh, this situation with all this uh, pandemic shenanigans going on, they decided yes, that that was the right choice to make. And uh, some of us got a nice $1,200 check in the mail. You know, uh, but they don't 
these economic decisions don't just happen on the big scale, right? They happen on an individual scale too. Do I take that job in Washington, D.C., or do I take a job in Bowling Green? I'm going to make a little less money here, but it's cheaper to live here, and I'll be closer to my family. All very important values and decisions to weigh against each other. Not trivial stuff, hard decisions to make. Does a single mother take a second job? She needs the money, but she wants to spend as much time as possible with her kids. These are hard, difficult decisions. Economics can help us, can help us make these choices. And in economics, we call choices trade-offs. We call choices trade-offs. Because whenever you make a choice for one thing, you're essentially choosing against something else. You're trading something for something else. By watching this video, you're giving up the cute cat videos that you could be watching. You're giving up, you know, an hour or however long this video ends up being of running around outside. That thing that you give up, we have a very special word for in economics. We call it opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. This is one of the most, most important concepts in economics. I know I'm going to say that a lot in this video, but it is. It is very important. Economists think of cost in terms of opportunity cost. And all I mean when I say opportunity cost is what you give up to get this other thing. So, you know, to have this computer in front of me that I'm making this video on, I, I had to buy it. And buying that computer, I gave up buying a TV. I want to make a note here. Opportunity cost isn't measured in dollars the way an accountant might measure costs or a financier. It's measured in something else. You know, it's measured in that next best alternative. So... I don't measure the cost of my laptop in $300. I measure it in the TV or the nights uh, with friends in restaurants and bars or the whatever I would have spent that money on. It's an opportunity cost is the value of your next best alternative. So let's dive in and be a little more specific here. When we say economics, we're going to be able to divide this into Two branches, right? Two branches, microeconomics and macroeconomics. Now, if you think back to your high school sciences, I think you may have heard the term micro before. Micro as in microscope, microorganism, microbiology, just means small, small, specific, nuanced. When we talk about microeconomics, small economics, what we're talking about is individuals and businesses, and the choices they make, the choices they make. Economics is all about choices, those trade-offs. So microeconomics, for a formal definition, is going to be the study of how households and firms make decisions and interact in markets. Now macro, macro of course meaning large, the opposite of micro. Well my, macroeconomics is going to be the study of economy-wide phenomena. You know, like inflation, like unemployment, like economic growth and prosperity and productivity. And both of these make up the study of economics when taken together. Mm -hmm.